Welcome to the Climate Change Committee's launch of our work on the fourth Climate Change Risk Assessment, CCRA4. Let's start with the science as we know it today. The global average surface air temperature has risen by more than 1.2 degrees above pre-industrial levels and is now exceeding the range of temperatures seen over the last 10,000 years. 2023 was the warmest year on record, reaching very close to 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels for the first time across multiple global temperature data sets. Almost everywhere in the world was impacted by this record heat. 77 countries set new monthly average records, with large parts of America, Europe and South America experiencing record warm temperatures. As recently as 10 years ago, the climate debate in the UK focused on the impact of climate around the world as an issue in the short term, and something we would only face here in the distant future. This has now been disproved many times over. There is clear evidence of people, nature and infrastructure facing damaging impacts of climate change. These risks are increasing where climate change is influencing more extreme events, making them more frequent, more intense and impacting over larger areas. In the UK, the first ever 40 degrees C day was recorded in 2022. The heat waves across the summer led to over 3,000 excess deaths in England and Wales for the summer period, alongside unexpected wildfires and the very real impact of droughts in East Anglia impacting our food production and stressing ecosystems. The response to climate change must address two areas. The first is mitigation, which is about cutting our emissions. In this country and in countries around the world, we have legally committed to a net zero target in order to deliver our obligations under the Paris Agreement. The other is adaptation, which seeks to increase the capacity of the country to respond to and reduce the vulnerability of people to climate impacts. Achieving net zero, however, is not enough. In parallel, we have to achieve adaptation. This is absolutely fundamental to supporting and maintaining our ways of living, to the functioning and comfort of our homes, our workplaces, our communities, and the success of our economy. This is particularly crucial because further global warming, and hence warming in the UK, is unavoidable. The world will keep warming until net global emissions fall close to zero. So we're very likely to face a further 30 years or so of increasing impacts from the warming climate. However, we know that we're not adapting at anything like the scale and speed needed to respond to these changes. My committee's assessment of progress in March 2023 found a striking lack of preparation from the government. For around a quarter of outcomes, the available indicators show insufficient evidence of progress, and in almost all other areas, we've only made limited progress. Every month without action leads to more damaging impacts and threatens the wider delivery of other government objectives, really crucial objectives, such as net zero itself. Overall, as we know from the recent State of Nature report, nature is in a poor state around the UK, leaving it highly vulnerable to the changing climate, as indeed is our farmland. Efforts to make the supply chains that are critical to our economy robust to climate change are only in their infancy. It's imperative that our infrastructure, including that currently being built to deliver net zero, is designed to be resilient in this future warming world, there is a very important role for government policy in this area, and all of our governments across the four UK nations need to rise to this task. In the UK, the Climate Change Act provides a strong framework for planning for these risks, adapting to the physical risks and to any opportunities posed by a changing climate is a key pillar of the UK Act. The Act, which was legislated by Parliament in 2008, puts an obligation on the Westminster government for a five yearly assessment of the risks and opportunities facing the UK from climate change, the climate change risk assessment. Our previous advice on the climate change risk assessment, published in 2021, found that action to improve the nation's resilience was failing to keep pace with the impacts of a warming world, resulting in increasing climate risks facing the UK. We declared this an urgent issue. Urgency was determined on the basis of the need for additional action, 
the gap in UK adaptation planning, the opportunity to integrate adaptation into forthcoming policy commitments, and the need to avoid locking in the impacts of poor planning, such as building in areas of future flood risk. UK-wide, we ranked nearly 60% of the risks and opportunities assessed in the 1,500-page report in the highest urgency category. So that brings us to today. The UK government published its third national adaptation programme covering England. It did take some steps forward. It responded to all of the risks in the CCRA3 risk assessment. However, it's very clear that this isn't enough to protect us fully from the climate change impacts we're experiencing now and which will intensify over the next 30 years. Most notably, the National Adaptation Programme lacks ambition and does not set out a vision for what a well-adapted UK might look like. This leads to the programme being vague about what improvements will be delivered. It makes it difficult to tell, let alone to measure, whether progress is being made. There are no targets with deadlines. The government has a key role to play in leveraging funding for adaptation, yet there were very few additional funding commitments and no detail on how the plan will be developed. Similarly, programmes in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland are all behind where they need to be on delivery and implementation. These programmes are yet to drive action and haven't committed to very much new funding, whether public or crucially unlocking private finance flows. Our lack of preparedness and lack of government action is a clear concern, one that needs to be addressed with real urgency. In the meantime, the Climate Change Committee is now beginning work to produce the next, the fourth climate change risk assessment, CCRA4. The next CCRA must ensure that the evidence base continues to evolve to serve the changing needs of adaptation policy, including the critical shift towards a focus on delivery and implementation of adaptation. I'll now pass over to Ken, who will describe the change of approach for this assessment and what we are going to do to make CCRA4 easier to understand and more usable for government and for the wider stakeholders. As you've heard from Baroness Brown, the urgency of adapting to climate change is increasing every day. My name is Ken Wright and I lead the team that is delivering the analysis for the next UK Climate Change Risk Assessment, CCRA, which will be published in 2026. The independent fourth CCRA will seek to inform the next round of national adaptation programmes across the UK, which will cover the late 2020s and early 2030s. These programmes are vital to help the country prepare for increasing extreme weather as the world continues to warm. This is necessary despite continued efforts to reduce our collective emissions over the coming years as the world will keep on warming until global emissions fall close to net zero. 1.5 degrees of global warming may not sound like much, but this number represents larger changes in climate and weather extremes at monthly, daily and hourly timescales. In the UK, this would result in wetter winters with increasing flood risk and warmer and drier summers with more intense heat waves and drought risks. We will continue to see these impacts increasing in frequency and size in the UK for the foreseeable future. It is this plus 1.5 degrees 2030s world and probably an even warmer world after the 2030s that we need to prepare for now. As you'll see, our overarching approach for CCRA4 is an evolution of previous versions. Our analysis will exploit the latest data and modelling advances to inform and improve efforts to tackle the UK climate resilience challenge. Climate change will increasingly impact our collective ability to deliver goals for British society. These include delivering economic growth, improved health of people and stronger communities. This is in addition to the legally required achievement of net zero by 2050. For CCRA4, we will put these desired outcomes front and centre of our assessment. The analysis will be framed around five distinct outcome areas speaking to different aspects of our lives. The functioning of our economy, our physical health and well-being, the comfort, security and safety of our homes and places of work, the functioning of the infrastructure on which we depend and the state of the natural world, which supports our food production and other vital services. For each of these outcome areas, we will be examining the many ways in which they could be impacted by climate change, both within a central warming scenario with future temperature rise based on continued international action to reduce emissions, and a plausible higher warming scenario, for example, if the climate changes faster than expected. 
In terms of outputs, CCRA4 will include two main elements, a technical report and a new well-adapted UK report. The technical report will synthesize the latest evidence from across the climate research landscape. It will provide a horizon scanning assessment of risks to the UK within each outcome area. We will build on the foundation of our previous assessment, CCRA3, to update our understanding of the relative urgency with which each nation of the UK should be addressing these and any new risks. The production of the CCRA4 technical report started in early 2024 and a call for evidence will be launched to seek new evidence published since our last assessment of UK climate risks in 2021. In addition to the technical report, for this assessment we'll be producing a new action-oriented part of the CCRA. This well-adapted UK report will shine a spotlight on how climate and weather changes will interact with critical systems and how these systems will need to be adapted over the coming decades to ensure that social outcomes and continue to be delivered despite the increased hazard. We will conduct and commission research to build a better and more quantitative understanding of how expected climate and weather changes over the coming decades will impact the things we depend on, such as energy, food, water and housing. It is important that these systems that provide these essential parts of our lives continue to be reliable particularly as these systems undergo their own transformations in the next few decades to meet the needs of future generations. The analysis will move beyond assessing the possible future change in risk to provide rigorous evidence of what being well adapted to future climate related change might look like. This includes providing an understanding of some of the most urgent risks and how these are expected to interact with critical components of society on which we all depend. We will bring together information on a wide range of adaptation options that can be taken to reduce rising future risks until at least 2050, the scale and speed at which these options would need to be deployed, and their effectiveness at reducing exposure to risk. Such options could include engineered solutions such as a flood management scheme, nature-based solutions such as soil restoration, or behavioural interventions such as training and skills development. This, in turn, will inform our understanding of the costs and benefits of actions to improve our resilience to climate change and how these might be distributed across society. It will also help estimate levels of public investment that will be essential to deliver improved on-the-ground resilience of critical systems over the coming decade. Recent advances in UK climate change projections and improved risk modelling capability will enable this report to provide a more detailed assessment of how climate risk varies from place to place and across different parts of society. For example, we can improve our understanding of how the increased risk of heat waves varies between different parts of the country and the characteristics of those living in climate risk hotspots. The well-adapted UK report will include more detailed analysis of the potential for cascading climate impacts, where an impact in one system can trigger impacts in others, for example, a failure in the power system can lead to transport disruption, particularly as it becomes increasingly electrified. It will also consider the co-benefits and trade-offs of different adaptation measures with parallel efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and restore nature. The analysis won't be delivered in a vacuum. The key decision makers needed to deliver improved adaptation outcomes will be consulted throughout to ensure that our assessment is delivered in the way most useful and usable to drive change. Separately from delivery of the independent CCRA4, the Climate Change Committee is required under the Climate Change Act to provide advice on climate risk. We will use the two pieces of analysis to serve as the evidence base for this advice on targeted policy interventions that can help address the risk of climate change highlighted by the assessment and move the country down the path towards being well adapted to climate change. In summary, the Independent Climate Change Risk Assessment 4 will provide the most authoritative and policy relevant assessment so far of precisely how the UK can adapt to be resilient to the climate and weather changes we will increasingly experience. Together with the seventh carbon budget, the CCC analysis will coherently advise government on the most efficient pathways for achieving net zero and improved resilience to the unavoidable aspects of climate change. Thank you, Ken. So you've heard about our planned work, but analysis alone isn't going to be enough. The committee will be continuing its extensive engagement 
with industry and business representatives, local authorities, and the public. Previous CCRAs have engaged over 450 individuals and more than 130 organizations, alongside calls for evidence and multiple round tables. We want to build on this engagement. Our advice on the fourth CCRA will be published in 2026, but before then, we will need that critical input and engagement. This is where you come in. We've already commissioned extensive external research and analysis, which we will publish alongside our final output. It's important to us that we're transparent in this process and that any interested person can read the content we use to shape our advice. We'll also be issuing a call for evidence on our website in 2024. We strongly encourage interested bodies and individuals to submit evidence to help us to shape our work. Most importantly, both our committee and the Secretariat will continue to engage with people in our day-to-day -day work. Invitations to meetings and events can be sent to our private office, and we aim to participate in as many as we can. This year, we will prioritise opportunities in sectors where we have traditionally had less representation, and we will ensure we attend events across the United Kingdom. We will post updates on our progress and more detailed timelines about our publication period as it gets closer. Once published, we will do extensive media briefings and parliamentary engagement to ensure that decision makers have had every opportunity to stress test and to explore our analysis. Thank you in advance for both your support and your engagement. And do get involved. We think this is all going to be very exciting.